going to go ahead and get started on this evening. If you have your Bibles, we're going to use as a foundational scripture, uh, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. What the word of God says, it says, Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Well, thus is the reading of God's holy word. It is already blessed just for a little while. We would like to teach from the subject tonight, still dealing with the seven deadly sins, but our title is Envy. Somebody say envy. Somebody mm -hmm. just type the word envy. Envy. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity, O oh God, to teach your word. Now, Lord, I pray for your anointing. I pray that you would use me as your instrument to speak life, to speak truth, O oh God, so that we can understand how the enemy works. Lord, we thank you that Paul says that we're not ignorant of his devices. So God, give us a spiritual discernment to know whenever anything is trying to take us off course, to knock us off track. We give you praise right now, God, for the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Use me now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Our title, once again, is Envy. Envy. Of course, this is our third week talking about the seven deadly sins. And we've already talked about pride. And then last week, we attempted to talk about greed. And I pray that you got some snippets of that lesson on last week. But this evening, we're going to look at the third deadly sin, and it is envy. Now, one of the first places in the Bible where the sin of envy actually shows up is here in the book of Genesis. As a matter of fact, the book of Genesis gives us two vivid examples of what envy looks like among siblings. Now, real quickly, I need to let you know that envy, envy is defined as being discontent and ill will over another's advantages, possessions, or even their spiritual gifts or personality. Oh, I didn't know that people could be jealous of another person's personality. In other words, envy is a desire to have something that someone else has so badly that you're willing to hurt them, harm them, or even kill them in order to get it. My God. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, envy. Envy resents the good or the recognition that other people may receive, especially when you got no recognition or you did not receive anything. But this is interesting here about envy because envy is a sin that carries other sins along with it, such as anger, jealousy, also rivalry, which can result in one doing something in the heat of the moment that under normal circumstances they wouldn't do. So the first example of envy, we, we just read the scriptures, is really based on Cain and Abel found here in Genesis chapter 4. But then the second example of envy is also found in Genesis. But it's in chapter 37. It's about the story of Joseph and his brothers. Remember how they hated him. 
because he had the coat of, of many colors. They, they hated him because he was the favorite of the father. So, so hatred is really in the inaction. And, and the Bible says they sold him into slavery. Now, I, I need to let you know, and we're not talking about Joseph tonight, but, but behind envy, behind jealousy, behind anger and hatred is Satan himself. Oh, yes, is, is that devil. Paul tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So people are not actually our enemy, but, but it's the spirit that's behind those actions of the people. So, so, so Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. And, and, and like I said, it was really Satan acting through them. But I need to let somebody know that Satan is, uh, he has no new tricks. His motives are still the same. And that's to steal, kill, and destroy. So envy is a very real tool that Satan uses daily to try to hinder our growth as born-again believers. But also he uses envy as a tool to try to blind the eyes of those who have not yet come to the Lord. So we have to pull down those strongholds so that people can be saved. So this evening, this evening, real quickly, I just want to identify what envy looks like and discuss some ways that we can overcome and conquer this old enemy in our own personal lives. We're talking about the sin of envy. Somebody just type or say envy, envy. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I want you to know tonight about envy is number one, that envy is perverted love. Let me say that again. Envy is perverted love. Yes, envy, just like pride is a sin of perverted love. And envy is perverted because it loves what other people possess rather than what is pure or lovely or true or of a good report. Yes, yes, envy. It, envy wants what others have and will not be content until it receives it no matter how or what it takes to get it. Now, now, envy is more than just coveting something that belongs to someone else. No, envy is when you love what someone else has so much that it begin to consume you so much that you want to see something bad happen to them so that you can get what they possess. And just like love originates from the heart of men, so does the spirit or the sin of envy. And Jesus made the following observation when he was questioned about the things that entered into a man's body that makes him unclean or defiled. And Jesus responded here in Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23. Jesus says, that which proceeds out of the man is what defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting, wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. Now, all of these things proceed from within and defile the man. So envy, envy, envy originates from within our hearts. So therefore, it is something that it, it's not something that happens to us, but rather it's something that comes from us. However, because it comes from us, the good news is we are in the best position to exercise control and discipline over it to keep us from sinning against God. Yes, yes, Matthew, Matthew 27 and 18 puts it this way. It, it, it says that Jesus knew that because of envy, they had handed him over to be crucified. Yes, the chief priest 
were, were very envious of Jesus on many different levels. They hated him. They despised him. Why? Well, because first of all, he claimed to be the son of God. But then he had proof that he actually was. And then he performed miracles that none of them had ever seen before. Nor no one had ever done those type of miracles. And, and plus, he never put on a show for people in order to make a name for himself. Many times he would heal somebody and say, don't tell nobody. You know, y'all, if it was us, we would want it to be on the front page of the paper. <laughs> Come to my healing ministry, dial 1-800. Uh, you, you can be healed for a love offering of 1999. And you can be, you can get your healing. Amen. But, but Jesus did not operate that way. And also he knew how to relate to the common people. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he hung out with tax collectors and, and, and wine bibbers or winos and prostitutes and something that those religious people during that time, they would never do. Yes, they were so envious of Jesus that they made the decision early in his ministry that they had to find a way to kill him. We're still talking about the sin of envy. Somebody just type envy or say envy, envy. envy, envy. Now, even though envy may not lead us to kill someone physically, there is such a thing as spiritual murder. Oh, yes. There, there is such a thing as spiritual theft, as spiritual adultery, spiritual idolatry. Spiritual fornication. Yes, the Bible tells us that the thought of sin is actually sin in and of itself. Oh, remember what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 28? He, he said, but I say unto you that everyone who looks at a woman and lusts for her in his heart has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And then Luke 6 and 45, he, he said, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, these two verses, they stress the importance of understanding that whatever is in our hearts will define who we really are regardless of what others may see, regardless of what the outside world may see. Remember, man, they look on the outward appearance, but God, he still looks where? At the heart. But also what's in your heart defines our relationship with God. And although you may never act on the thoughts and desires that rise up in your heart and in your mind, but from a spiritual standpoint, those thoughts and desires identify who you really are on the inside. Just like the prodigal son. Oh yeah, he went out and spent all his money on riotous living. But, but the truth be told, he wasn't the one who really had the problem. It was the older brother. He never left the house physically. But in his mind, he left. In his mind, he despised his. In his mind, he hated his daddy and his brother and all of that. So spiritually on the inside is more important than what's done on the outside. That's why Jesus would rebuke the Pharisees and the Sadducees many times and say, y'all try to clean the outside of the cup when the inside is filthy. Mm. Amen? Amen. Some writers say, won't he make you clean mm. inside? And so therefore, something on the inside will begin to work on the outside and that's what brings forth change. So, so, so we have to be careful uh, for the seeds that are, are planted in our minds and in our hearts, be careful what you watch and how you compare yourself and what you look at and what you begin to desire because someone has something nice. You may say, oh, I want one of those. But after a while, you may say, I want that one. Mm -hmm. And that's how the devil begins to trick us and it become a mind thing. And then it gets into the heart. And then what happens, it begins to be put into action after we allow it to grow. That's why Paul tells us in Romans 
chapter 12, verse 2, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is for your life. You see, even though we're saved, our mind still functioned the same way it did when we were living in sin. Amen. One comedian said and put it this way and said, you know what? If a, if a person was was ugly before they got saved, after they got saved, they they're still ugly. Amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. They just got saved on the inside. Amen. And so therefore, that's the battle of the mind, the battlefield of the mind that George Myers talks about. So we have to have our minds renewed. However, it's the only after we're saved that we're really able through the spirit of God to begin the process of renewing our minds because he will help us. Yes, God will enable us to get, get rid of those fleshly and carnal faults and begin to replace them with God's love and his word. You see, envy has a way of perverting the love of God that's within us. Therefore, we must learn how to overcome it whenever it rises up in our lives. So in closing, how do we keep ourselves in check when we have needs and desires that may not yet be met? Or, or how do we maintain our focus and our faith in God when it seems like those who love him the less ends up with the most or the best? Or, or how do we stop the envy before it has a chance to take root within our hearts and fester and grow? Well, the answer to these questions is basically we must demonstrate the perfect love of God. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. We must learn how to demonstrate the perfect love of God. Yes, we must destroy envy through perfecting the love of God. Because if envy is a form of perverted love, then the only way to truly deal with it is through perfecting the love of God that's within us, that was given to us by the Holy Spirit when we were born again. For example, 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, and I'm throwing a lot of scriptures out here. It actually makes reference, yes, 1 John makes reference to Cain and Abel. So I'm connecting Genesis now with 1 John to show you the spiritual implication of envy. Listen to what he says. He says, for this, this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Watch this. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother, and, and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brother's deeds were righteous. So don't be surprised, brethren, hmm. if the world hates you. In other words, because of envy, there's some people who really want to take you out. People who are jealous of you for, for no reason, just because you're walking upright with the Lord. So we have to know how to answer. We have to know how to deal with that. So here we see 1 John talking about Cain and Abel. And, and he speaks of us loving each other. And he makes the statement that we should not love each other as Cain did. You see, Cain's love for his brother was perverted and was demonstrated in his actions when he killed him. Yes, Cain wanted something that Abel had, and it angered him because he didn't have it. Therefore, that anger, it turned into action that caused him to kill his brother. In other words, his love for his brother turned cold as his love for what his brother had grew hotter and hotter within him until he took action and killed him. So the only way we can deal with envy is to perfect the love of God that's within us and learn how to display his love in our daily actions. And what are those actions? Well, the actions of love are stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, and we're almost finished. It says, love is patient. 
Hmm. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag. It's not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. Does not take into account or wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all Amen. things, Amen. hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Amen. And when we really examine the emotions and feelings related to envy, you can see that only perfected love can enable us to overcome it. Hmm. Remember, envy in and of itself is love. Yes, it is, but it's perverted love. Therefore, in order to conquer envy, you must establish your heart and set your focus on understanding and perfecting what God's word says about love. And then, in all situations and circumstances, when dealing with all sorts of people, you must love the way God loves. Hmm. Amen? Amen? So dealing with irate people, hmm. dealing with, with, with messy people, mm. Mm, what should we do? Mm. Love must be patient. Amen. Love must be kind. Amen. Love must not be jealous. And then no matter how successful you become or how many possessions you may own, love doesn't brag. Mm. Love is not arrogant. And it never acts unbecomingly. And, and even when you have the opportunity to show off your gifts and your talents, just remember this, that love does not seek its own. It's not self-serving. And then when you deal with people who, who you know don't have your best interests at heart, remember that love is not easily provoked and it doesn't take into an account a wrong that's suffered. And even when you read the paper or hear Something about somebody who got arrested or, or went to jail. Love doesn't gossip. Love don't go to the, to the phone. Love goes through the throne. Remember, amen, amen, amen. love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but it rejoices in the truth. So my brothers and sisters, in everything that we do, if our actions, our thoughts, and our intentions are filtered through God's definition of love, we can and we will overcome and take authority over the spirit of envy or jealousy each and every time. Love never fails. Amen. Well, my time is up and I thank God for yours. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen.